Auto a highlight text in CapCut. I'm in CapCut for desktop on PC. I'm gonna start by copying our clip of the dog. I'm just gonna paste him over here on the timeline. We'll move him out a little bit to keep him separated. And we need some text on there. So for this first example, I added the text within CapCut. So I went up to the text button, added the default text onto the track, and I made it about the same size as my clip. And I also changed the color to black and move the text up about where I wanted it. And then of course, change the text to say nap time. Now I wanna highlight it. I wanna get that yellow in there like I had over here and I want it to wipe across maybe like it's being highlighted. So to make that happen, we need something yellow. So I will go over to import and I will come down to stock materials and then just search for a yellow rectangle. What I want here is a yellow rectangle that's gonna fill as much of the screen as possible. I don't want fancy shapes or anything like that. For the type, I'm really not interested in a video, so I'm just gonna switch that to photos. This first one that popped up will work just fine, so we're gonna click the plus and add that to the track. Then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna move it to where it starts just a little bit after the clip begins. And then I'm gonna go out to this end and drag it in. So I don't want it to keep going after the clip ends. And don't worry about this white border around it. That's not gonna be a big deal for us. I do wanna grab it and move it up about into place here, roughly. And then I'm gonna go over on the right underneath of video, the mask tab, and I'm gonna pick rectangle. And that's masking or cropping this clip of the yellow. But we need to do a little bit of work to it because it's way too big. So let's grab this bottom handle here, drag it up and then move the whole thing up. And right about there would probably be okay. Maybe we should go a little to the left tighten it up just a smidge, that works. But to get this to have the motion like it's being highlighted on as we watch, I need it to start out really skinny and slender over here at the left and then fill out the whole text by the end. So we're gonna come back down to the timeline and we're gonna move our playhead to the beginning of this yellow. Then we'll come up and click the add keyframe within the mask section. And now we're gonna come back over to our yellow mask deal here, and I'm gonna make it much, much smaller, make it very, very skinny. And then I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna drag it over to right about there. That's where our highlighter pen would likely start. And then I'm gonna come in a little bit, move the playhead just somewhere inside. We can dial this in later, so let's just make sure it's in a little bit here. Come back up and click add keyframe on the mask again. So notice that gives us a second keyframe. So we have our first one, our starting keyframe, and then we have the second one. So when it starts, we want it to be really skinny. Now, what do we want it to be when it hits this keyframe? Well, we want it to cover the whole text. So let's go ahead and drag it out where we want it. Something like so will work pretty well. Yeah, let's make sure it's down a little bit. All right, go back to the beginning here hit play. The only problem I see is that it seems to be dropping down as it comes in. So that means one of my keyframes, I dropped it down a little further than the other. So let's click back on that clip. We'll take a look at our first keyframe and underneath the mask, we can find the issue here. Position X is minus 223 and Y is 37. If we go over to our next keyframe, oh, I think we found our problem. The minus 16 for X, that makes sense because it's moving across the screen, but then the Y, it shouldn't move at all. It should be the same as the beginning keyframe. And that was 37. So let's make that 37 and now see what we have. There we go, it doesn't drop on us. Now let's do one that has the text already as part of the clip that you're using. Cause this can give you a little problem unless you make a minor change from what we did for our doggy and added text through CapCut. So we're over here on our clip and we wanna get our yellow thing in. We could either copy it right here from the timeline or since we've still got it open up in the media panel, we can just hit the plus button and add it. Now I think what we'll do in this case is we'll highlight a whole line and that white border is gonna give us an issue. So let's get rid of that to start with. So I'll hit the little resize button down here and drag this in, just get rid of the white. I'm not being super particular about it. I just wanna make sure I got the white going. Confirm that. Okay, this is fine. We can drag this over. Under the video properties, hit the basic tab and we need to come down to where it says blend, drop that down 
and instead of default, we need to change that to multiply. And now you'll notice that we can see the text, well, we can see everything through this yellow, even though the yellow is on top of the text. What was different in our doggy example is we had the dog clip on the bottom, then we were able to put the yellow clip in the next up layer, and then we were able to put the text over top because we were using text in CapCut, if you had a clip where the text had a transparent background, that might work the same way. So if we're putting the text over top of the yellow, we don't have to worry about blending. If we're trying to put the yellow over top of the text, as we are in this clip, then we need to make it so that we can see what's underneath the yellow. Now you could just leave this as normal. You could say default and lower the transparency. But what you'll find is that you got to get the yellow really, really light to be able to see the text underneath. And that just doesn't, doesn't work so good. You lose your bright yellow or you can't even see the text. So the solution to that is change blend to multiply. And then we carry out the steps just like we did before. So first let's drag this in so it's not going on after the clip. Let's come over to mask. Underneath the video properties we'll hit mask. We're going to select a rectangle zoom back out widen this out to where we want it to be that looks fine make it nice and skinny and i think that'll work just fine there you go and i'm gonna do the keyframes a little bit backward here since i've already got it where i want it to end let's just click this keyframe button and tell it that's how we're going to end then drag our playhead back to the beginning of the clip add another keyframe and say but i want you to start here wherever here is and we'll oops easy there and then we'll drag in to get our little sliver move that over here since we know i tend to move things up and down when i'm dragging them around let me go check our y position so we're 31 on the first keyframe which is the start of the video and then we are 28 on the last keyframe so we'll just bump that up to 31 and now we match so let's take a look and see what we've got now if we say that's going too fast or too slow all you have to do is come down here in the timeline, click this ending keyframe. If we want it to go faster, we'll drag it over to the left. And there it went faster. If I want it to go slower, I can grab this little keyframe here, drag him further out, deselect, play again. So that works great for a situation where maybe you're reading and you want the words to highlight at the same time that you're reading them. That would be awesome. But now let's go back. Now I want to switch back here and turn off this mask because I want you to see the reason that I moved that up and made sure it was kind of in the general center area of where I wanted to apply it is because if I started with this yellow too far off and then I say, let's do a rectangle mask. When I try and drag this mask up, it's not letting me go where I need to go. Even if I stretch it out super big, it will not go up past the, that middle section there. But if I go ahead and start with this yellow clip up where it's going to include the line I want to highlight, and then I click the rectangle mask, now I've got more room. Now my borderline is up there under the title, and on the bottom it's down more than a paragraph below where I need to be, so I'm in good shape. So that's why I said we needed to roughly center our yellow clip over top of where we want it to be. You saw it wasn't a perfect center by any stretch of the imagination. Now the way I did this, I stayed all within CapCut and I just used what was available in the stock media library. But you don't have to do that and there are some benefits to getting your highlight somewhere else. If you're not finding something within these stock clips that has the right color, maybe you want to use your brand color for the highlight and it's just not in here, or you notice that these have a texture, everything you're finding has a texture that you don't like. For instance, this definitely has a texture. It wasn't a bother to me for this situation, but you know, we did end up having to crop out this white outline to use this one and you can have other things like that. So if you want to get exactly what you want, the way that I do it is come over to Canva. As long as you're going to end up with something that is 1920 by 1080 or 16 by nine, that aspect ratio, it really doesn't matter. You can use video, we're not going to export it as a video, but you can use video as your template because that'll be the right aspect ratio. All I would do here is scroll down until you get to shapes, click that and drop it on, 
drag it out so that it covers the whole thing. You don't have to be precise here. If it overlaps, that's just fine. Pick your color. Click this color icon up here. You can either go from your brand kit, default colors, or you can click this button and pick any color in the rainbow by sliding things around and doing what you want to do. Now remember, this can be a highlight, so you want it to contrast with your text. So I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to go back and just pick this teal from my brand color and that's all I need. So I'm going to click share, download, and instead of MP4 video, I will say PNG and then download. And I'm doing this in Canva, but you can do this anywhere you want. I mean, you can grab a rectangle that's maybe available in a stock media library or free clip art or whatever, or if you're using Photoshop or Photopeo or Inkscape or GIMP or anything really that will allow you to create a rectangle with your favorite color. So then back in CapCut, I would come back to Import and Device, and I can either click this Import button to open up my File Explorer and select the file, or I can just drag it on in, which is what I'm going to do. There we go. So we'll get rid of this yellow clip that we had going on here. I will drag in the blue one. Again, I'm going to start it just a little bit after the beginning, but I definitely want it to be ended by the end of the clip. So the easiest way to work with this, instead of trying to figure out where our mask goes first, I think what we'll do is we'll come back over to basic and we'll change this blend mode to multiply here. And now if you don't see blend mode, there's this little uh, drop down arrow. So if you don't see the things underneath the blend mode, just hit this little drop down and pick multiply from there. All right, now let's go back over to mask because we definitely want to mask this. I don't have to worry about centering this time because this is covering the whole entire screen and I don't have to worry about that white border because it doesn't have one. The whole thing is teal. So we hit rectangle and we'll drag this out to where we want it to be. Whoops, easy there. Now I can work by centering a little bit. It's looking good. Maybe I want it to be real thick this time. I don't know. And then we need to do our little keyframes here. So I'll stick the mask keyframe on at that point, which is just into the highlight blue part a bit. Drag the playhead back to the beginning. Add another keyframe on the mask. It popped in there. Now I can shrink it down to our sliver. Drag that over to where it starts. And let's see what we have. That looked pretty good to me. And of course, if it's a little bit too dark and you want to lighten it up, we can select it and we can go back here to basic and under blend. Even though we said multiply, we can still adjust opacity or opacity. So we can lighten it if we want. The point is that we don't have to, to be able to see the text. And you can also, and this is any of these examples that we've done so far, but when you're using the mask here, you can adjust the feather and the round corners. We can round those corners in like so, if you want to do that. And then as far as feather goes, you can sort of fade out, feather out what you've got going on there. I tend to like a pretty crisp highlight, so I'd probably leave that at zero. Just want to show you what those options do. I hope you found this helpful and I appreciate you hanging out with me. If you have any requests or suggestions for other techniques you'd like to see or tools you'd like to know about, by all means, leave a comment and let me know. If you don't have CapCut yet, there's a link in the description. Yes, it's an affiliate link. So if you end up purchasing at some point the pro version of CapCut, I may receive a small commission. You don't have to. There's plenty of features in the free version of CapCut desktop. And especially if you're just getting started with it and learning your way around, the free version is a great place to see if it's something you like.